Burden is light, that's it. Hello there, Facebook and Zoom friends, those of you who are joining us on Zoom and Facebook. Um, we're into, again, Thursday night discipleship Bible study. We want to, we're going to discuss the kingdom of God again tonight, but we're going to look at a different scripture tonight. Last week we looked at... Um, uh, uh, Matthew 6 33 where it says seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you but tonight we're going to look at Luke 17 starting at verse 20 and we're going to read on down I don't know how far we're going to go down tonight but we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. How are you, Vidalia King and John Jackson? Bless you. Welcome. Um, so that's Luke 17, 20. We're going to start off at Luke 17, 20. Um, we're waiting for others to come on our Zoom. Um, Hopefully you can see me okay and hear me okay. Uh, Luke 17 and 20. Luke 17 and 20. Let me make sure. Okay. All right. Luke 17, 20. And it reads as thus. Once Jesus was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God was coming, and he answered, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. Nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, for in fact the kingdom of God is among you. Um, some versions say, is in you. Amen. Uh, then he said to his disciples, the days are coming when you will long to see one of the days of the king of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will say to you, look there, or look here. Do not go. Do not set off in pursuit. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must endure must, much suffering and be rejected by this generation. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you, God, for mercy. We thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you for your salvation power. Lord, and right now, Lord, we thank you that you have made the kingdom of God available to us. Touch us right now as we go about our study of the true kingdom of God. We'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. The uh, Pharisees wanted to see when the kingdom of God was coming. They had heard Jesus talking about this kingdom of God. They had been looking for the kingdom of God to come. And they had heard Jesus speaking about it. It was the topic of conversation around Judea and Galilee. And um, Jesus the Christ had come and the kingdom of God was to be ushered in and they, these Pharisees, the religionists in particular, were interested. They'd heard him preach, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. They wanted to know when it was coming. And... Um, uh, uh, for it meant great blessing both for Israel, the nation of Israel, 
and for them personally as religious leaders. They had heard Jesus instruct his disciples to pray for the kingdom of God to come. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in earth as it is in heaven. And their curiosity was aroused, aroused. They wanted to know when to expect the kingdom of God. For they thought the kingdom of God was going to come with the Messiah riding in on a white horse and defeat and raising up an army to defeat the Romans. Um, and so he answers their question uh, in a very simple statement in two verses, verses 20 and 21. Then what, look at what he did. He turned to his disciples in verse 22 and gave them a message on the coming day of God's kingdom and on his own return. So there are two stages of the kingdom of God, but I want to speak on one tonight, the spiritual kingdom, the kingdom of God, the spiritual kingdom. Jesus um, says, they, they ask him, the coming of the God's kingdom, when will it come? And Jesus tells them the kingdom of God cannot be observed. He says that. L listen to what he says. Look, look at the text. It says, he says, um, when he was asked by the Pharisees, he says, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed. That's a Greek word, parateresios, 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 which means um, it cannot be watched closely with the eyes. It cannot be seen with the eyes. It cannot be seen telescopically. Amen. Um, the word means to watch closely, to give close observation as in an astronomical um, observation, as in w when uh, people would look at the stars they would look closely. Nowadays, when we look at the stars, we look with, through a telescope. Um, he says, you cannot see it that way. It does not come with an outward, dramatic, thunderous show. It does not come in such a way that people will say, oh, it's over there. Oh, it's right there. Look, it comes with the silent, pervasive influence. As a matter of fact, uh, once Jesus says, um, it comes like leaven in a lump of leaven in dough. You can't see it. <coughs> but you see the effect. For when you put yeast. Amen. Amen. When you see yeast in the dough, you see... Um, Okay, I got, hold on, let me admit somebody here. Let me admit them. Okay, I think that's a house of blessing they're in. Yes, it comes like uh, uh, yeast in dough, in other words. You can't see the yeast working on the dough, but you know it's working because it's growing and it's growing. And it's growing. And that's how the kingdom of God works on us. It grows in us. Your life begins to change. You can't see the actual kingdom in you. You can't see the Holy Spirit in you. You can't see the rule of re and reign of God in you. But you can see the effect of the rule and reign of God upon you. Amen. And so we want to um, uh, look at it like that. The, the, the leaven, the yeast, silently permeates the whole lump of dough. If you look over at Matthew, Matthew, look at Matthew 13, 30, verse 33, where Jesus talks about that. He says, 
The kingdom of God is like. Let me look at it here. Let's turn to it. Matthew 13. And, and the main scripture we're looking at today, House of Blessing, is Luke 17. Um, the 20, we're starting at the 20th verse. It, it says here, the parable of the yeast, you, uh, Matthew 13, 33. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. You know, if you put the yeast in the dough at night, in the, it, it'll be small. The, dough will, the lump of dough will be small it, when you put it in. But the next morning, it will grow. And you don't want to let it grow too, because <laughs> you don't want to let it grow because it'll grow past everything. It'll keep on growing. Amen. Um, so we want, but the kingdom of heaven is like that. It permeates and takes over your entire being. And that is the rule and reign of of God in one's life. Amen. Um, so it doesn't come, uh, it cannot be seen with the naked eye. The Lord's kingdom is not of this world, not of physical and material dimension. It does not have space and solidity. Amen. It does not occupy space and soli have solidity. It does not have physical dimensions. It does not have uh, physical depth or physical height or physical length. But it is there and it does affect one's entire being. Because the kingdom of God, uh, good to see you Greg Savage, Ebony Edmonds, good to see you. It is the kingdom of God is the rule and reign of God in one's heart. Heart. In one's heart. Amen. In one's mind. In one's very, and when I say the heart, I mean your very being. The very center of one's being. It is not the kind of kingdom that we see when we observe the planets or when we even observe the nations of the world. He says the kingdom of God is within you. Some say this should be translated. I know that uh, uh, the New Revised Standard Version translated translates it among you. And if so, then Christ is saying that he is the embodiment of the kingdom of God. He is setting up the kingdom of God among them there and then. God is already beginning to rule and reign in the lives that Christ is touching. Others say the words mean within you. And if so, then the kingdom is to be looked for within the hearts and lives of people. I like within you. It is in our hearts and our lives. The rule and reign of God. That's why the Holy Ghost takes up residence in us. And let me take you again to uh, Matthew 28. Uh, Matthew 28 verse. Uh, I'll read from 18 through 20. And it says here. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. In other words, I'm in charge of everything in heaven and on earth. I call the shots about everything here. I have all the authority. I the has been given to me by the Father. Therefore, go. As he said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And, with, and remember, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, what he's saying is here, I've been put in charge of everything in heaven and earth. And so go as you go, as you live your life, as you go make disciples, 
of everyone you come in contact with, of all people of all ethnicities, people of all, everyone. I don't care who they are, make disciples of them. And then immerse them, listen to this, immerse them in of God. Immerse them in the reality of God. Immerse the Father, the Son. In other words, put that so much in them. Amen. That they are, that he, I will be with you. I, the Father, and the Holy Spirit will be with you always. Forever. From that moment that you enter in the kingdom. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes, yes. And, and, and yes, Leonard Baker, it will show some signs. You will see it in the lives of those who allow God the rule and reign over their life. And see, here's the thing about it. God operates by giving us the Holy Spirit. He is operated already by giving us Jesus, by endowing us, imbuing us, enduing us with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost enables us to say yes to the Lord. The Holy Ghost empowers us to come under the rule and reign of God and to obey Him. And then it, I love what this says in um verse 20 of Matthew 28 it says teaching them to obey everything I've commanded we have to teach people to obey whatever Jesus said that's what a disciple does a disciple doesn't just sit back on his law and say I'm saved I'm going to heaven that ain't, that's not a disciple that's not a Christian that's not a saved person Save people, make other disciples. Amen. You got to go. As you go, make disciples. Let people see your light. Let them hear your, the gracious words that fall from your lips. Because they're coming from Jesus himself. But that's why you have to study the word of God. So that you can ex be an expression of the word of God as well. A an expression of God as well. Does that make sense to you all? Doris Scott, I see you. Does that make sense to you, dear? Okay. Um, what else we got here? Let, 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 let me look at this. Let me look at this. And so, it is within us. Um... We have to, uh, the kingdom should be looked for within our hearts and lives. The kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. It is the changing of hearts, the rule and reign of God within men and women's lives. It is the power of God to take a sinful, immoral, unjust person and make, change them into a servant of God. And let me tell you this. God can change anybody. Did somebody whisper anybody? I heard somebody whisper anybody. That's the truth. God, you know, if he can change Saul into Paul, who was killing Christian. Paul, Saul was killing folk. He was a bad actor. And he changed him. He changed. He could change you. He could change me. Amen. Amen. Um, Jesus preached the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom. Repent and believe the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's available to you, to whoever. Whoever repents and believes. 
The, uh, Paul says this in Romans 14, 7. Look at Romans, somebody get Romans 14, 7. Look at it, it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's, that's saying something. And, and now the kingdom of God is here. It is in us. But it's coming also. When Jesus returns, he will come to rule. Amen. The kingdom of God is internal. But one day the Son of Man will come back Amen. And bring us to be with him. And, and see, here's the thing. We can't control the kingdom of God. All we can do is submit. All we can do is admit. All we can, you know, we can submit. Yes, Lord Jesus, I bow down to you. We, can, we have to admit, I'm a sinner and I need you to take over my life. And then we have to commit. I commit my entire being to you, to obey you. We can't control that thing. We may wish to see the kingdom of God as it's being prepared um, for folks. It's being close at hand and coming soon. It's being now existing or but we have nothing to do with its control no matter how much we desire to see it we do not control one day of it we cannot create a single day of the kingdom so that we can see it but what it is that makes us ache to see the kingdom is and be with God here's the thing he says at the end of um uh, the, the, the great commission he says and lo I am with you always even to the end of the world that's right Ed, uh, Ebony Edmonds he desires full surrender your whole self your total being your heart your mind your physicality because it is a, it, it, it's spiritual, but it's also physical. He wants your body to be his temple. Mm. And once you press in and enter the kingdom of God, there's a lot of things that will just fall away from you. Those things that people do. Even those things you do in secret. Y'all yeah. know them secret sins? Yeah. Yes. And those, I, I, I won't, well, I might mention them. Those presumptuous sins. Oh, right. That, that, that hating in your heart. Even when you feel those feelings come up, you'll begin to pray for those folk. The brother in his basement or sister in her basement looking at pornography. Oh, that happens now. To the brothers and the sisters. You know, that, that, that will fall away. Amen. And, and, and here's the thing. When the kingdom of God comes, we're able to go through tough trials. We're able to go through persecution and personal abuse and mistreatment because God is in us. But he, as he transcends the world, he allows us to transcend. What does he say? In this world, we, you will have trouble. You will have trials and tribulation. But be of good cheer. 
I have overcome the world. Brother, Reverend Carl Pepper, good to see you, my brother. Yes, I have overcome the world. Ah, uh, we're able to deal with divisions and torn families and torn social groups, even torn churches. Divided churches will come together if the people there have pressed in to God's kingdom. It's about God's kingdom. See, the problem is when we want our kingdom to come. And that means we're the center of attention. It's all about me, mine, mine. It, 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 it's not, it, it, just remember this, it ain't about us. It's about God. It's about his purpose. Jesus said, I come to do the will of he who sent me. He said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. Huh? And, and, and see, that's, when we were kids, I, I, I see my schoolmates, uh, some of my schoolmates are on. When we were teenagers, it was all about us. Oh yeah, it was all about us. And we, we wanted it to be all about it. We want, oh man, we wanted the center of attention. And, and a lot of, and, we, and some of us got it. You know, but as we learn, as we press into God's kingdom, we learn it's not about us, it's about him. Even in the Holy Trinity, The Holy Ghost doesn't point to himself. He points to Jesus. Jesus doesn't point to himself. He points to the Father. The Father points back to Jesus and the Holy Ghost. And they do this circle dance. My God. Is that Sister Jean I see there? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Hey, Jean. <laughs> I'm glad y'all have the cross up there. Beautiful. That, see, and, and see, even the cross, and let, let me say this. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. He didn't, he never preached the cross. Paul preached the cross because he equated it with the kingdom. He equated it with the obedience of Christ even unto the death of the cross. But it's, it's about, it, go, it points back, the cross points back to the rule and reign of God. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Because uh, yeah. if you get this kingdom mindset, nothing can stop you. If you get this kingdom mindset, nothing can throw you off kilter. If you get this kingdom mindset, and Jesus says this, I'll be with you always. Always. That's what eternal life is about. Eternal life is about being with God always. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. The reason we have it to the full because eternal life, that Zoe life, that abundant life is God with us. Life with God. Yes, yes, he did give us dominion. 
But that dominion means not just be the boss of everything, but to take care, to nurture everything. Use it. Be, be, you know, use that word rightly, dominion. It's better translated, nur he gives them the power to nurture the earth. Amen? As the gardener nurtures his garden. Amen. So, we are to be about, we are to be busy about our labor for the Lord. Therefore, uh, Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wherefore, beloved, look at 2 Peter 3.14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, God's kingdom, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Amen. So here's the thing. We want to be about God's business. Jesus died to and was raised to exemplify the power of the kingdom of God. Hmm? Yeah. Philippians 2, verse 8 through 11 says it like this. And being found in fashion, as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See what I'm talking about? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. And every of things in the heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Anointed One, Jesus the One that is smeared with the very spirit and being of God. The essence of God. Jesus is God. Yes. Jesus is God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. My God. He, he, listen what he says to the disciples in John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your hearts be troubled. He just got through telling Peter about the uh, how he had to go to Jerusalem and die. If you if you look at that, they kind of um, and, and then he told he had told Peter, Peter, you go deny me three times. It, P Peter Peter said, I, I, Lord, where are you going? He said, Where I'm going, you can't follow me, but you will follow after. Him. Peter said, Lord, why can I not follow you now? He said, I'll lay down my life for you. Now that's what Peter said, and I believe he meant that. But here's the thing. We mean a lot of things when we say them. But when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, if we, somebody look up and we won't be around. But, now, for real, I mean, that's just human nature. And, and, and Jesus said, Will you lay down your life for me, Peter? Really? Very truly. He says, with a certainty, I tell you, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. 
And but then he's come back. But li listen, listen, listen. But the very next verse, he said, "But let don't let your heart be troubled about that, Peter. Believe in God, and believe also in me." Let, let me tell you something. I, and let me tell you this because this needs to be said. We're talking about the kingdom of God. God is not mean. God is not mean. He's not like us. He don't hold grudges. What did he ask? What did Jesus ask for when he got ready? What did he tell? He said, tell the disciples and Peter also, because he knew Peter was tripping. Because Peter had denied him. But God is not mean, y'all. Facebook people, God is not mean. He's forgiving. His love, God's love is unconditional. In the Old Testament, they call it hesed. His loving kindness is unconditional. It's not based on what you do. It's based on what he has done. Agape in the New Testament. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Because I've done some stuff that I won't even tell y'all. Don't say nothing, Greg. Don't say nothing. <laughs> I got my friend Greg, my childhood friend. We, we done did some stuff now. He's compassionate. He's forgiving. Not like us. And, and if we want to be godly, we have to learn to be the same way. We have to learn to be forgiving. We have to learn to be compassionate. That's right, Sister Vodonia. We have to learn to be merciful. Because he, God knows that we're only flesh. And we have to take that into account for our brothers and sisters. We know how we are. So you got to look at others the same way. What did Jesus say when he came back? He had prayed in the garden. Father, I don't want to go to, I don't want to, I don't, I don't, take this cup from me, Lord. He had asked the disciples, y'all watch and pray with me for a minute. When he came back, they were asleep. He said, couldn't you watch with me one hour? He said, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. But we have to try to allow the Holy Spirit. We have to try to allow. We have to allow Jesus to strengthen us in our bodies through the power of the Spirit. I'm not telling you just go out and do everything your flesh feel like doing. That's not what I'm telling you. But I'm telling you that God is not mean. Thank you, Jesus. He's merciful. Peter even asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Seventy times? He said, no, Peter, seventy times seven. Now, that didn't mean 490 times. That meant unlimited. However many times he need to be forgiven, forgive him. Because that's God. That's godly. Huh, that's it. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Huh, hallelujah. Them old songs mean something. Right. Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth unmoved can stand, but build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand, I love that, and just hold to his hand, hold on to God's unchanging hand, you ought to hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things
sing eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. And I have to do the second verse. It says, trust in him who will not leave you. What soever years may bring. Listen to this. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Oh, you are to hold to his hand. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. You better hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I had to struggle with that to the last one because I almost got a little teary-eyed. Some of them songs will make you... Bring, bring out stuff that you think about that you've been through and they'll bring tears to your eyes. And it did that for a minute. I had to kind of say, okay, I can't, be, I can't break down now. Let me keep singing. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. You know, we thank God that he forgives. I, I, I saw that, Greg, where you talked about the pit that we were in and God brought us out. Psalm 40, look at, somebody look at Psalm 40. My, you, you done took me to another place now, but I have to go there. Psalm 40 said, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry clay and set my feet on a rock. That rock is Jesus. That rock is the word of God. That's what that rock is. That rock is the words of Jesus, the, 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 the teaching that he gives us that we put into practice. He says at the end of the Sermon on the Mount in uh, Matthew 7, um, let me find it here so I can read it to you rightly. Matthew 7, he says, um, everyone who hears these words of mine, and 724, and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock of obedience. I kind of put that one in, that in. <laughs> the rock of obedience to God's word. Amen. Ah. Yes, yes. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them, does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. Huh? The rain fell and the winds, the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. You want to build your house on the solid rock of the word of God and putting into practice the word of God. How do we put it into practice? By following Jesus. For he, the Bible, he said himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is what it means to live in the kingdom, y'all. Now Sunday I'm going to preach a sermon on the kingdom of God. Amen. So y'all tune in to that on Facebook at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. We're going to stop right here tonight. Any questions? Any right to questions? Uh, I see that Greg says the elements are the same, but it's how we respond to the storm. That's it. We have to be in the, the rock of obedience to the word of God. Putting the word of God into practice. 
That is the essence of the kingdom. Huh. The Lord is our compass, Leonard Baker. <laughs> I love it. Who needs a compass when you have the Lord? He is the compass. He will point us in the right direction. Because he said, listen, he says he is the way. Yes. Amen. Yes, yes. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions or comments? I'm going to wait for a minute so you can write them in. Any questions or comments? God is a great God, isn't he? Amen. Amen. Bless you all. Bless you all. I'm waiting on you. Okay, go ahead, dear. I just want to say thank you for saying you are because I mean, because um, throughout my life I struggled with that, because I really didn't know. <laughs> and I would read the Bible or stuff that happened in my life, and I didn't, I connected that to his character. Mm -hmm. um, and I really didn't know. Yeah, like, God is not mean. That's not part of his character. I know some right. preachers, some preachers will make you think that, but he's not mean. He is a good God. He's the absolute good. As a matter of fact, that's where the word God comes from. It means the good. The good. The absolute good. You're welcome. You're welcome, dear. Bless you. We're going to sign off now. I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word. And now, Lord, uh, as we press in towards your kingdom, touch us and pull us in by your love, by your hesed, your loving kindness, by your agape, your unconditional love and devotion to us, your people, your children. Lord, that you're constantly forming us into the image of your son, Jesus the Christ. Lord, take us and mold us. Mold us and have thine own way with us. Make us and mold us into his image. We'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all belongs to you and you all by yourself. Lord, it is all about you and not about us. But it's about you and it's about others. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayer. In the mighty matchless name, character, and nature of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Love you all. You all take care. Take care. Take care. Be blessed. Love you.